Falls Creek represents some of the most adventuresome experiments in urban density in the world. Mm -hmm. right? And you can see a half century of it from the West End in the 50s and 60s to just going beyond the Burrard Bridge, that's 1980s. Mm -hmm. uh, Expo site is 1990s. Mm -hmm. On the other side, Salts Creek, done in the 1970s, very mm -hmm. much a reaction to the West End, by the mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. uh, no high rises, very green, yeah. low density, lower yeah. density. And now the Olympic Village mm -hmm. and Southeast Falls Creek in the 2000s. Well, that's 50 years of urban development. Yeah. That's a lot. And the South Shore of Falls Creek in the 70s, they built the seawall at such an angle, you couldn't get down to touch the water. Mm -hmm. Why? Tell me. So polluted. And they never imagined it would ever be cleaned up enough so to even allow people to touch the water. Yeah. And I don't know if you remember this. I, I first started visiting Vancouver in the early 70s. And mm -hmm. I can remember when you could look across False Creek to downtown from Broadway. Mm -hmm. It was so polluted, the air, that you couldn't see the mountains. Mm -hmm. Not only that, you couldn't even see the towers such mm -hmm. as they existed back then. We have forgotten how polluted the city was. Well, I can remember being on a boat in the middle of the Strait of Georgia back in the 70s and 80s oh, yeah. in the summer looking back at the city and seeing an orange haze oh, over it. Nice. And it's probably typical of any North American or major city right. in the world, I suppose, yep. largely because cars emitted particulate were, uh, stuff like 10, 20, 100 times or no more. Emission what they controls back then. There yeah. are four reasons. Heavy industry in false grade. Yeah. So you had beehive burners. Mm -hmm. right? People will know what a beehive burner is. I mean, you just put in the wood and you burn it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Up goes the fumes. There are still chutes in old West End buildings where you put your garbage, go, mm -hmm. go down the chute to a boiler in the basement to provide heat for the building, and of course the pollution just went right back up mm -hmm. uh, the stack and into the air. We had outdoor burning. So when you, you know, did your leaves or garbage, you just burned it. Mm -hmm. And there were no emission controls on cars. Mm -hmm. And our heating, was sawdust and coal and oil. Mm -hmm. Well, in the 70s, it all changed at the same time. So emission controls came in on cars, mm -hmm. natural gas came in, so we didn't have to heat. We had nice clean fuel to heat. We uh, made outdoor burning illegal. All of the chutes in the West Ends have been boarded up. Can't, can't do that anymore. Uh, and we cleaned up probably 95% of the air. At the same time, uh, we were separating the sewers. Uh, of course, industry was moving out of False Creek. Mm -hmm. So we were cleaning up the air and the water simultaneously uh, and dramatically. Now, people still complain, it's human nature. We're talking about the 5% that still, mm -hmm. you know, still has to be addressed. That's a very expensive 5%. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we can do that. And it, it's a good lesson to remember that it can happen very quickly to the point now where we have whales coming into False Creek to feast on the herring that are spawning there as a result of the habitat that we've built as a requirement of the seawall being right. constructed to the standards we have today. And only a few decades ago, that was a toxic stew dead almost. Zone, dead yeah. zone. And yeah. by the way, you don't want to stir up the bottom. Got it. <laughs> I remember. Mm, that's messy. But the water itself, you can swim in. Yeah. You can swim in, as well yeah. as the fish there. When my dogs swim in, they seem to do okay yeah. with it. <laughs> well, if you look at the north side of False Creek, you know where uh, David Lamb Park is in that kind of little folly? Yes. Rocks. So kids can get down there and throw rocks into the water, which is what kids love to do. And right in the middle of the folly, there's a big rock. Mm -hmm. And when the tide is at its highest, it just comes to the top of that rock. Mm -hmm. And around the interior, of it says, the moon circles the earth, and the ocean responds with the rhythm of the tides. Mm -hmm. So you can go past that little folly, see that rock, and for a 15-foot tidal gap, which mm -hmm. is a lot, you yeah. can see where it is from day to day. Yeah. So it puts you in touch more with the diurnal cycles of nature. Yeah. And if you want, you can get down there and play in the water. Yeah. Right. yeah not too many cities can say that. True.